So let's take a look at functions of several variables. So let's say we have a standard one variable function f of x equals x squared. Now you can go ahead and plug in anything for x. Let's just say we plug in f of 2, then f of 2 will equal 2 squared or 4. Now in functions with several variables, now we're going to have something like this where we have f of x comma y. So we're going to have two inputs this time. Instead of just x, we have x and y. So let's say f of x comma y equals x times y. In this case, you would have to sum plug in something for x and something for y. So let's just say we plug in, let's just say we evaluate f of 0 comma 2 now. So we're going to plug in 0 for x and then 2 for y. So in this case, we'll get 0 times 2 or 0. So realize in the top equation, there's only one input variable x and the output variable is going to be y or f of x. So in that case, we would graph x squared or y equals x squared in a two-dimensional system or a two-dimensional plane, like so. Now, now to notice in the bottom function, we have two variables or two input variables this time. We have to plug in both x and y. And so in this case, this is actually going to be equal to z. So we have to set z equal to x times y. And so we would have to graph, in this case, in a three-dimensional system with x, y, and the z-axis. So for number one, let's say we have the multivariable function f of x, y equals x squared times e to the 3 x, y. And we have to, for letter a, evaluate f of 2 comma 0. So notice we're going to plug in 2 for the x and then 0 for the y. So in this case, let's just go ahead and write f of 2 comma 0 equals, now we're going to plug in 2 for x, so 2 squared is 4, and then e to the 3 times 2 times y, which is 0. So then we'll get 4 times e to the 0. e to the 0 is 1, so the answer will be 4. So now for letter b, the next part, let's go ahead and find the domain of f. So realize that the domain in this case is not just going to be x, it's also going to be what values can we plug in for y as well. So we need to look at both x and y values and see which values we can plug in. And so realize that you can basically plug in any x value and any y value. So this is basically going to be all numbers for x and all numbers for y. So to write proper notation of the domain, you're going to write it in set notation. So we have curly braces on the outside. So for all ordered pairs x comma y, because we're going to plug in x and y for the input, such that that's going to be the vertical line, and then you go ahead and state the domain. So basically, x can be from negative infinity to infinity, And then also, comma, y can be from negative infinity to infinity. So once again, this set notation states that the domain can include all ordered pairs, x, comma, y, such that the x values are from negative infinity to infinity, and the y values are from negative infinity to infinity as well. So basically, all real numbers for both variables. Now there's also another way to put the answer for the domain because realize that r squared refers to the entire two-dimensional rectangular coordinate system. So basically the entire 2D coordinate plane. And so if we can include all x values, all real x values, and we can include all real y values, so this can go on forever, then we can include the entire two-dimensional rectangular coordinate system. So r squared is also an acceptable answer for the domain. So now let's go ahead and find the range of f. Now in order to find the range, we must set x squared times e to the 3xy equal to z, as mentioned earlier, because z is going to be that output. So we have to see what are the range of possible values for the output z. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite the function once again. With this time, z is going to equal x squared times e to the 3xy. Now if you're familiar with the graph of e to the x, obviously e to the x is always going to be above 0. So remember, no matter what you plug in for x and y, you'll never get a value that is less than 0. So this tells us that the range is going to be in bracket notation, this time from 0 to infinity. So for number 2, we have f of x, y, z equals e to the square root, or e to the power of the square root of z minus x squared minus y squared. So notice we have three input variables this time, x, y, and z. 
So for a, let's go ahead and evaluate f of 2, negative 1, 6. So when we do that once again, so we have e to the square root. Now our z variable is 6. So we're going to plug that in for z minus x squared. So 2 squared is going to be 4. And then minus y squared. So that's going to be 1. 6 minus 4 is 2. 2 minus 1 is 1. And the square root of 1 is 1. So we end up getting e to the first, or e. So now, in order to find the domain of f, once again, we're going to have to use a set notation. So we have curly braces on the outside. And then this time, it's going to be for all ordered pairs, x, y, and z, because those, are, those three are all going to be the input variables, such that. So looking at the function, notice we cannot have a negative number under the radical. So we have to say that the entire, or everything inside of the radical, so z minus x squared minus y squared must be greater than or equal to zero. Now if you wanna change, or if you wanna rewrite the domain so that we can actually graph the domain, then you can go ahead and isolate z. So we say that negative x squared minus y squared is a greater than or equal to, and we can subtract the z, so negative z. And then we can go ahead and divide over the negative. And remember when we divide the negative, we have to flip the inequality. So in this case, x squared plus y squared must be greater or less than and equal to z. And if we rewrite it, we can also say z is greater than or equal to x squared plus y squared. And that's an acceptable answer for the domain. So for letter C, let's go ahead and find the range of f. Now, as mentioned before, when we had a function with one input variable, like only f of x, we graphed in two dimensions. Now, in the previous problem with two input variables, x and y, we have to graph in three dimensions. Now we have three input variables, x, y, and z, so this would have to be graphed in four dimensions. Now, obviously, it's very difficult to uh, picture something in four dimensions because we don't know what that is. So we can't set this equal to z because z is already an input variable in the multivariable function. So we just leave it as it is. Now, let's go ahead and find the actual range. So realize we can compare this multivariable function to e to the x. If we look at the graph of e to the x, obviously e to the x is going to be above the x-axis, or above y equals 0. But realize we have a square root function. So the maximum value that we can produce with that square root function is 0. Because let's say we make x, y, and z all 0, so we're trying to find 0, 0, 0. We would get the value of 0, the square root of 0 is 0, and then e to the 0 is 1. So the maximum output we can get, or the minimum output, is going to be 1. Meaning it has to be 1 as our minimum value. And the maximum value, well, we can go all the way to infinity, since this is the graph of e to the x. So it's going to be from 1 to infinity, the range. So for number 3, let's go ahead and find and sketch the domain of the function f of xy equals the square root of x plus y. So right off the bat, we know that there's a square root here. And so whatever's inside the square root, we cannot have it less than zero. So for the domain, we have to say that x plus y, whatever the value is, must be greater than or equal to zero. Or if we want to be able to graph the domain, we could say isolate y and say y is greater than or equal to negative x. So we go ahead and put the domain in set notation for all ordered pairs x comma y such that y has to be greater than or equal to negative x. So if we were to go ahead and graph this domain, we just we can just go ahead and graph y equals negative x first. So it's going to look something like this. Now it needs to be greater than or equal to, so we can have a solid line here. And the y must be greater than, so we shade the top part here. Or the top or the part where the y value is going to be greater than or equal to the negative x value. So for number four, we have f of x comma y is equal to the natural log of nine minus x squared minus nine y squared. So we know that for the natural log function, whatever's inside the natural log, we cannot have that value be less than or equal to zero. So in this case, for the domain, nine minus x squared minus nine y squared. It cannot be less than or equal to zero, so it must be greater than zero. Now if I want to be able to sketch the domain, I can go ahead and subtract over the nine. So we get negative x squared minus nine y squared is greater than negative nine. And then I can go ahead and get rid of the negative. So divide the both sides of the equation by, or both sides of the inequality by negative one. 
Remember when I do that, I must flip the sign. So we'll get x squared plus 9y squared. This time is less than 9. And so now I can multiply both sides of the inequality by 1 over 9 to make it an equation of an ellipse. So if I do that, we'll get x squared over 9 plus y squared is less than 1. So now it's in the form of an ellipse. So in set notation, this would be like so. So we have all ordered pairs, x comma y, such that x squared over 9 plus y squared is less than 1. Now if I were to just draw a general graph, not an exact graph, just a general one. Now this ellipse is centered at 0. But realize that it's only less than 1, not less than or equal to. So we, I actually have to draw dotted lines here. If I can try to draw dotted lines, then it's going to be less than. So it's going to be inside that ellipse. So now for number 5, we have f of xy equals the square root of y minus x squared over 1 minus x squared. So right away we know that y minus x squared must be greater than or equal to 0, since we cannot have a negative under the square root. And also we know that for this one we cannot have a denominator of 0, because obviously we can't divide by 0. So if we set 1 minus x squared equal to 0, then we can say negative x squared equals negative 1 x squared equals 1 and then so then x squared or x is going to equal the plus or minus the square root of 1 or plus or minus 1. So that is going to be another restriction. So when we write our domain in set notation once again for all ordered pairs x y or for all input variables x and y such that now we can go ahead and state the domain. So x cannot equal plus or minus 1 and now let's go ahead and change this equation just a little bit so that we can actually graph it. So we can say that y must be greater than or equal to positive x squared. So we can go ahead and write that down here. And so if we were to graph this here, we can go start by graphing y equals x squared. So here's y equals x squared, just a rough approximation. Now x cannot equal plus or minus 1, so we can go ahead and graph uh, plus or minus 1, or x equals negative 1, x equals positive 1, so it cannot equal those values, and y must be greater than the value of x squared, so we just go ahead and shade in everything else.